Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vectorized abstract background using Inkscape and this will be similar to the other tutorial I made about creating a low poly portrait but the only difference is we're going to be using a different uh, method of creating this effect and we're also going to be using mesh gradients for the first time as well so let's go ahead and get started here at Inkscape by the way if you'd like to make Inkscape appear dark and with these customized icons I will have a link to that information in the description of the video so let's go ahead and set up the document I'll go to file document properties and I just want to set the display units to PX and I want to turn off the show page border and then we can close out of that and we'll go to view Make sure you have custom selected and then we'll zoom in at one to one and then we'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button here and we'll want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button there and the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle so let's grab the squares and rectangles tool and click and drag to create a rectangle some, something like that and uh, let's go to the select tool and we want to make this the size of whatever you want your background to be. So in my instance, I'm not actually using this for a background. I just use this as a thumbnail for the video. So the size I used was 1280 by 720. So uh, if, if you're using this for something like a website and you want to make it, uh, you know, 1920 or something like that, go right ahead. So uh, I'm going to set the width here to just 1280. Then I'll hit tab on the keyboard to skip over to the height and set that at 720. Hit enter. And uh, let me convert this to a path. I'll go to path, object to path. And now we want to add a gradient onto here, but not the typical linear gradient or the radial gradient. We want to use a mesh gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the, on the box that says mesh gradient. And this will not work unless you're using the latest version of Inkscape uh, version 92. So just make sure you, you're upgraded to the latest version of Inkscape. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to uh, use the mesh gradients uh, following along with this tutorial. So I'll go ahead and click mesh gradient. And that's going to put give us a, uh, a different sort of gradient as opposed to like a linear where it goes from left to right or radial where it goes in a circle or an ellipse going outward. Mesh gradients gives you four different corners to work with here. And if you go to the mesh tool, which is right here, create and edit meshes, you're going to notice we got four different nodes here at the corner. So I'm going to click on this node right here and highlight that. And I'm going to put a different color at each corner. So if you see here, I used red, light blue, uh, a tannish cream color and a dark blue so I'll start out over here I'll make this a shade of red something like that then I'll click on this node down here I'll make that a light blue maybe something like this over here Then I'll click on that node I'll make that a uh, um, like a tannish cream sort of color maybe something like that maybe something a little lighter maybe maybe I'll start with yellow and I'll lighten it up a bit and then I'll take the S row and slide this to the left and I'm using the HSL tab here for this under the fill tab there's different settings you get RGB HSL I like to use HSL so I'll use something like that uh, and then I'll click this one up here and I'll change this to like a dark blue uh, like, a, like a navy a deep navy blue maybe something like that and I'd say that looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do now is let's go back to the uh, select tool and let's open up the layers menu now. Click on this button up here that says view layers, the keyboard shortcut shift control L. And I'm going to click this button up here that says uh, create a new layer and position it above the current uh, layer name. Just leave it as layer two. It doesn't matter what the name is. Go ahead and click OK. And in this new layer, I'm going to create a circle. So let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool and hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And I'll go back to the select tool. And I want to make this a color like green, something like something that's, that isn't being used here. So there isn't really green being used here. So I'm just going to change this to green. And I'll bring the opacity of this down a little bit. Let me go back to the fill and stroke menu, bring the opacity down a bit. And then click back on the layers menu. And I'm just going to take this and put this in the top left corner over here. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the rectangle so we have them both selected. And I'm going to click the button that says align top edges and align left edges. So we have it stacked up in the top left corner over there. And then we can click off of the graphic to uh, deselect everything. And now I want to take a duplicate copy of this green circle and put it in this corner. So I'll click on that, hit control D to duplicate it, 
hold shift, click on the rectangle, cent uh, not, not center it, align the right sides. And we want to create we want to create duplicates of these two green circles and put them down here now. So let's click and drag over both of those. Hit Control D to duplicate. Hold Shift, click on the rectangle, and align the bottom edges like that. Go ahead and click off to deselect everything. And now I want to take this circle down here in the bottom and hit Control D to duplicate it. And then I'll hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag it up and down like that so it locks it onto the vertical axis. And I want to create uh, quick little copies by pressing down the space bar. And that's going to create a copy. So go ahead and press the space bar and create a few copies like that. Oops. Put that one right there. And then uh, I'll just click and drag over these center ones here. And I'll just duplicate them by hitting Control D. Hold Shift. Click on the, uh, the rectangle. Align the uh, left edges to put them over there. So we have them on that side. Click off of that to deselect everything. And I'll take this circle here. I'll duplicate that as well. Control D. I'll just hold Control. Move this over. Pressing the space bar to create copies. Like that. And these do not have to be evenly spaced out in part. Uh, in fact, it's better if they're not evenly spaced because we want a really whimsical, uneven look to this effect right here. So spacing these, uh, giving these like uneven spacing between them is pretty good. Like you notice there's a bigger gap here than there is here, which is good. We want something like that. So again, let's click and drag over these copies here in the middle, excluding the ends on the left and right. And I'll duplicate them by hitting Control D. And then I'll hold shift, click on the rectangle, and align the bottom edges. And click off it to deselect everything. And let's grab this circle here. Let's duplicate that by hitting control D. And I'm just going to move this around inside the rectangle, pressing the space bar to create a bunch of different copies like that. And again, we don't want it to be evenly spaced out. We want it to be very random and sp sporadic like that. And that's pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do now is... Where it says layer one, I'm going to click this lock icon so that we can't select anything on that layer. And what I'll do now is I'll click and drag over everything, which should only grab the circles because we have layer one locked. And I'll go to extensions, uh, generate from path, uh, Voronoi, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Voronoi diagram. Uh, we'll click on that. The type of diagram we want. Uh, Delaunay triangulation, whatever that one is called, select that one. Uh, automatic from selected objects, default stroke, go ahead and click apply and close out of that and you'll see it created a whole bunch of different connecting uh, strokes going to each circle. So what I'm going to do now is click and drag over everything and I'm going to hold shift and click on one of those black lines to deselect that object so we only have the green circle selected. And then we can press delete on the keyboard to get rid of those circles. And what I'm going to do now is I'll click on the uh, our little wireframe right here. And I'll ungroup that by clicking the button that says uh, ungroup selected objects. And click off that to deselect everything. And what that did was it broke everything up into individual little pieces like that, which we're going to need. So again, what we're going to do now, just like we did in the... Um, the, uh, the little poly portrait tutorial, we're just going to go and color in each individual shape with the color beneath it. So let me zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And I'll click on this shape up here and I'll grab the dropper tool and I'll just grab a sample of that color right there and that should color it in with that fill. And if we turn off the visibility of layer one, you'll see we filled it in with that color. So what we're going to do now is go and do that to each and every individual shape. So I'll just click on that. And for this, instead of going back and forth to the toolbar, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for the, for the dropper, which is F7. And I'll just select that. And I'll go back to the select tool. Uh, instead of using the toolbar, I'll use the keyboard shortcut, which is F1. And I'll just go and color in each of these with the uh, corresponding color beneath it in the gradient. So I'll just go through this and do everything. And... Uh, if you're wondering if you missed an object, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you'll go through this whole thing and you realize that you missed one. You could just go ahead and turn off the visibility of layer one and you'll see exactly what's, what's filled in and what's not. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this. I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch me doing this whole thing and then we'll continue on. So I'll speak with you in shortly.
Okay, so as you can see from toggling off the, uh, the uh, layer one, you can see I have everything filled in. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm just gonna turn off layer one permanently. We don't need that anymore, that was just a reference. And I'm just gonna click and drag over everything. And what I wanna do now is get rid of the black outline, otherwise known as the stroke. To do that, with everything selected, I'm just gonna hold shift and click on the X. Or otherwise what you can do is, uh, let close out of the layers menu, go back to the, uh, the stroke, go to the stroke paint menu and then click on the X. That will also turn off the stroke. And then we can group everything together by clicking the button that says group selected objects. And you'll see we have finished the design, but the problem now is that we have like this white gap between uh, the, the, uh, the objects there. Uh, a, a quick little way to fix that would be to just hit control D on the, on the keyboard to create a duplicate copy. And that helps in filling in a lot of those white gaps in there. As you can see, there's still some in there, uh, but what you could do is you could just duplicate it again, control D. And that looks pretty, that looks pretty good. So uh, that's how you can go about creating this sort of background design using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>